Greetings, saints of God. Welcome to studying the Word of God. As John declared in 3 John 1 and 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thou so prosperous. I pray that last week integrity the test was an eye opener for you and that you had the opportunity to be challenged and get the victory and your integrity through the power of God. Now it should be clear that integrity must start with the leader, regardless of who you are. It is one of the greatest needs of the church today. Again, we need open and honest leaders at the forefront of ministry. And this will only happen if we constantly strive to keep our integrity intact every single day. Now, let's study the importance of a vision and the difference between it and a visionary. The greatest misunderstanding with vision and ministry, I believe, is that if a pastor has a wonderful vision, then his leaders and congregation will follow him. I believe that many people who approach the concept of vision and leadership have it wrong. Why? Well, because they believe that if the cause is good enough, people will automatically buy into and follow along. But that's not how it really works. People don't follow worthy causes just because. I believe they follow or should follow worthy leaders who promote worthwhile causes. Again, they should follow worthy leaders who promote worthwhile causes. The church needs worthy leaders who have an earnest report, an honest report, no differently than those called for in Acts chapter 6 and verse 3 where the apostle declares, Wherefore, brethren, glory to God, Look you out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. And this is the business of administration, uh, the business of making sure everyone is taken care of uh, properly uh, in order to do this. Again, the requirement was find men of honest report, men who were full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom you may appoint over this business. Now, another great example is found in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 12 through 14. Moses spoke to the people and said, How can I myself alone bear your conference? or troubles, and your burden, and your strife. In other words, your controversy and disputes. Verse 13 says, Take you wise men, and understanding, and known among your tribes, and I will make them rulers over you. I will make them leaders over you. But these are the qualifications that they must have and that you must look for and that you must know. Wise men and understanding and known among you, your tribes, and then I will make them rulers over you. So people should trust the leader first, then the leader's vision. Personally, I don't care how good your vision is. If I can't trust you, then I would not follow you. And should your position change further down the road when I am following you, I know how to break away and continue to follow Christ. So having a clear understanding of trust would change your whole approach to leading by division. Also, if a leader does not have a vision, he or she will lose his or her ability to lead. Well, why is this? Well, because one, once extraneous events 
start to drive them away from their vision, they are no longer a leader, just a leader in name. Why? Because he is not leading. He is simply reacting to events, and chances are he will not be a leader for long. And this can and will open the door for confusion. And the enemy, as you very well know, is looking for any open door to stop the vision. This is another reason why our vision should be God-given. It should be God-given. And we'll learn more about this later. We as leaders can get tied up in too many things to the point of just doing stuff just to be doing stuff. It's almost like trying to keep up with the Joneses. Now the danger in all of this is that we begin to neglect the core vision of the ministry. Now, perhaps you will agree that the church today is starting to recognize the importance of being purpose-driven with a vision for its ministry. Listen, vision is the ability to imagine an attractive and exciting future for a group of people and uniting them for a common cause as God has mandated for that specific ministry. Again, as God has mandated for that specific ministry. Now, on the other hand, a visionary is one with original ideas about what the future will or could be like. They always envisioning things, always have a vision, always having different kinds of ideas of what things will or could be like. So we don't want to confuse vision with visionary. Now that we know what a vision is, it is also important to know what a vision is not. Now, some pastors and leaders think they have a great vision for their ministry, but in many cases they don't. I personally have learned that it is very easy to confuse vision with many other things. Let's take the time to examine a frequently used scripture when we talk about vision and let's break it down for a clearer understanding using our Strong's Concordance. And since we will be in the Old Testament, we'll be using the Hebrew section. So get your strong concordance, get it beside you, and let's go to work. You certainly don't want to leave home without it. Now, let's look at Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 and verse 3. And it declares this very familiar passage. You have heard it. You have heard it many times. Let's see what we can uncover. Let's see what we can learn. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Write the vision. Now, the word vision here is strong H 2377. That's the number in strong if you want to find this word vision. H 2377. The H stands for Hebrew. It is the Hebrew word kazon, meaning oracle, prophecy, divine communication. So then a vision is not something that we make up. It's not something that we make up. That's why the Lord said unto him, write the vision and make it plain up on tables or tablets, whatever's being use for writing that he may run that readeth it he may run that readeth it the phrase readeth it uh, in other words means you are going to garrison you are going to carry and you are going to proclaim it 
That's what that means. And not just reading and running. Uh, or running and reading. You're going to guard it. You're going to carry it. And you're going to proclaim it. Verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Why? Because that is the distinguishing mark of true prophecy. The distinguishing mark of true prophecy as well as of a true prophet. It will not lie. At the end it shall speak and not lie. Why? Because it's God given and we know that God cannot lie. He's not a God that he should lie. Now watch this. Watch this carefully. Though it tarry, though it tarry, that is strong H4102, strong H4102, the Hebrew word mahar, meaning to linger. It means to linger. So he said, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Now this tarry is strong H309. The Hebrew word a hair. It means to delay or remain behind. In other words, even if it seems like it's lingering, it will not be delayed or remain behind. It will come. So wait and wait with steadfast endurance. My God, my God. Now notice that the word tarry is used twice in verse 3. But they are two different words with different meanings. And so this is why your strong concordance is very important to understanding words and properly interpreting the scriptures. So if you don't have one, please get one. It will do you a world of good. And it's not complicated to understand. And you can always find someone, uh, your pastor, one of the leaders in the church, uh, to help you understand it and how it's divided and how you search for words and how they are defined and what have you. Praise God. So hopefully that brought some enlightenment to you concerning the vision. Again, it means oracle, prophecy, divine communication. And so it is not something that we make up. It must come from God for the ministry that he has called you to. Praise God. Now moving right along. I submit to you that you don't have a vision. If you don't have a vision, my friend, you can't write it. And if you can't write it, it can't be read. And if it can't be read, no one will run with it. They won't guard it. They won't carry it, nor will they proclaim it. So that's very important. May I submit to you then that a vision is not a dream. A vision is not goals or objectives. It's not a purpose or a mission. These are not visions. So how do we know the difference? Well, let's look at some guidelines or characteristics of a vision. Praise God. Number one, the first one. First of all, a vision is clear. It is clear. It leaves no room for confusion. Why? Because God is not the author of confusion. And if he gives you a vision, then it will be clear. I have read visions that were so convoluted that I couldn't figure out what the vision actually was. Basically, they were mission statements with goals and objectives. 
my friend, I submit to you that that is not what a vision is. Secondly, a vision is challenging. It is challenging. It will require effort on our part and those who read it. It has to be guarded and it has to be proclaimed. It requires action on the reader's part. They have to read it, they have to believe it, and then they have to take action. And it can be challenging, especially in the day and time in which we are living. So many distractions, so many things are pulling for our attention and we haven't taken the time to recognize uh, these distractions and harness them and bring them under subjection. So we just rip and run. But if you want to run with the vision, a God-given vision, it's going to be challenging. Because the devil, again, does not want to see it fulfilled. Thirdly, a vision is a picture people can envision. This is what makes the running worthwhile. When you can envision what should be happening. You then know exactly what direction you are running in and the purpose for which you are running. You have clarity. You have the picture. You can envision it. And so you can now guard it and proclaim it. Praise God. Another point, uh, point four, a vision is the ministry's future. Mm -hmm. A vision is the ministry's future. Again, it is prophetic. It's prophetic and it must be fulfilled. So it's our future. It must be fulfilled, which means we are working towards its fulfillment. Now, our vision here at Voices of Victory Christian Ministry is this, to teach God's people to know, live, and give testimony to the unlimited power of God and to live a victorious life filled with ministry. In other words, we're going to teach God's people to know, the unlimited power of God. We're going to teach them to live the unlimited power of God. And we're going to teach them to give testimony to the unlimited power of God. And then once they have this and know this, then they must live a victorious life filled with ministry. Not just living a victorious life. It has to be filled with ministry. And so this is our future. And let me tell you, the Spirit of the Lord spoke this to me as clear as day. As clear as day. And I'm wise enough to know, my friend, that every member will not run with it. Absolutely not. So therefore, it would not come to pass or be fulfilled in their lives. But those who do read and run will surely... Be blessed, my God, my God. <laughs> Let me give you another point. A vision can be achieved. It can be achieved. So don't get discouraged. We just have to seek the Lord. After all, he gives the vision. We just have to seek him. He declared it, and it will surely come to pass. Again, it will surely come to pass, as we've already read in the scripture. Again, keep in mind, everyone will not achieve it, just as everyone will not make heaven. Everyone will not make heaven. Sadly to say, so again, don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed, leaders. It will be fulfilled even if it's only in the life of a few. Please do not get discouraged as leaders. 
We all won't be saved, even though we all can be. We all won't read and run with division, even though we can and we should. This is the nature of the beast. This is reality. So please don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Don't lock the doors on your church. Don't run out. Don't go into hiding. Stand there firmly and steadfast. Wait on it. Do it lingers. Do it terrors. It will come to pass. It will not be delayed or left behind. Praise God. Another point is, is that a vision must be achieved. And it must be achieved with a sense of urgency. Otherwise, you could be circling your purpose and not getting to the center of it. Encourage the people to read it and then run with it. Because we don't have time to be spinning our wheels. We don't have time to be involved in a whole lot of different kinds of things while we're electing the vision. This should be our focus. Can you imagine that? Knowing, living, and testifying about the unlimited power of God and then living a victorious life filled with ministry. Can, can, can you imagine that? But that takes work. That takes effort takes concentration. You have to be focused. Praise God. And it's going to take work. Yes, it's going to, it's going to take work. It's going to be challenging. But it's achievable. It is certainly achievable. So then, uh, one last point uh, before we close. A vision is mandated and approved by God. Now we saw that in the definition of vision in Habakkuk. We, we saw that. We saw that definition vision out of the Hebrew context. It's prophetic. So it's mandated and approved by God. If it's prophetic, then it's approved by God. Why? Because it is his ministry. It's his ministry. He simply entrusted us with it. Therefore, it's the ministry which I have received of the Lord, as Paul has said on many occasions. It's the ministry which I have received of the Lord. It's not Willie Moore's ministry. It's God's ministry that he has entrusted into my care. I don't have no copyrights. I don't have any trademarks on it. It's the Lord's ministry. He just entrusted it to me. And so, therefore, it's not about me, and it's not about you. It's about him. To God be the glory. My God, my God. Look, I'm going to stop here. Hopefully, through the word of God, I have been able to enlighten and encourage you as leaders. But we're not done. We're not done. Because next week, we'll study some things that can hinder a vision in case you were wondering what can hinder a vision. Now that we know that it will linger. But the bottom line and the end state is it will come to pass. It will speak and not lie. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We appreciate you. We give you praise. We give you thanks again for your bountiful blessing. Lord God, your endless mercy and your long suffering towards us. Oh, Lord God, I pray that this word has been a blessing to your people. And I pray that they have received it and received it with gladness. And having received it, that they act upon it and do all that you have commanded of them, Lord God, so that you may be glorified. And their day, and that they may be blessed. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Again, thank you for tuning in. 
and I look forward to being with you again on next week. Most of all, I pray that this teaching is a blessing to you. If it is, send your comments. Praise God. Know that I love you and I care about you. And I thank God for you. And I thank God for this ministry. God bless you.